when on occasion my father-in-law has ventured out to do a little grocery shopping by himself, he has made the remark of how overwhelming the choices are in the frozen pizza section. Well, it's an older guy, right? He's going grocery shopping, so what do, you going, what do you think he's going grocery shopping for? But frozen pizzas. And he'll say something along the lines like, all I wanted to do was get a pizza, but there were dozens of choices. It was so overwhelming. And sometimes he was so overwhelmed by the sheer number of pizzas to choose from, he went home empty-handed. As Americans, we love to have options so that we may choose exactly what suits our needs. Some of these choices are low-stress decisions, such as, should I eat this high-fiber cereal or that high-fiber cereal? Should I eat bananas today or strawberries? Which vegetable goes well with steak and which goes well with chicken? Other choices can present folks with a little higher level of stress. Examples of this that come to mind would be things like when my wife Heather asks me, what are you wearing to the meeting with so-and-so today? Or, do you think this outfit looks good on me? Now for a husband, that second question can elevate the stress level from a little to a whole lot in a hurry. But you get the idea. Making choices between which healthy foods to eat and between which clothes to wear, while they matter, do not matter terribly much. Still, there are countless choices we make each day which affects our lives. Some choices are not too important, and others are vitally important to our health and well-being. Choosing which cereal to eat or which outfit to wear doesn't really register very high on the level of important decisions we have to make every day. On the other hand, making good choices about wearing seat belts while we are driving and making the choice not to drive after we have been drinking. Now those choices are extremely important and we need to make the right choice. I'm amazed at how many people I see not wearing their seatbelt when they get into their cars and doing this instead of doing this as they drive down the road. And sadly, we hear from the Minnesota State Patrol that the number of people who do drink and drive remains relatively consistent. Therefore, as the weather gets warmer and we get into the season of graduations and celebrations, Please, please make safe and smart choices. Some choices are particularly important and others not so much. There was a poster in a previous church I served that says, choices turn the pages of life. And that is true. Choices, especially the big choices, do determine which course our lives take. In two weeks, we'll have the pleasure to recognize and bless our high school graduates. As they prepare for the next chapter in their lives, they might be thinking about things like, do I go to this college or that college? Do I take this job or that job? Would I like to live here in St. Peter or would I prefer to live somewhere else? What health insurance should I have? How prepared am I to make good financial choices when it comes to saving money and keeping my debt to a manageable level? We face many choices in life, and many of them do matter tremendously. Today, Jesus makes it clear that God makes choices too. In our Gospel reading from John, Jesus said, You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Just as Jesus chose the 12 apostles to go out baptizing, teaching, and preaching the good news to the world, 
Jesus also chooses us to do his work in this world. In our baptism, God chooses us. God forgives us our sins, gives us the gift of the Holy Spirit, and makes us members of the kingdom of God. In baptism, God says, I choose you. I claim you now and forever. You are my beloved child. In holy baptism, the Lord sets us aside to be his children in the world. This means that we are also set apart for something very special, and that is to bear fruit. Fruit, that good fruit, is good and loving acts that benefit our neighbor. So don't overcomplicate it. When Jesus says, go out and bear good fruit, think about good and loving acts that can benefit your neighbor. As Abraham was blessed to be a blessing, so we too have been blessed by God to bear fruit in God's name and through his power active in our lives. The power of God that is present and active in our lives has a name, and that name is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the living, indwelling presence of God. In today's readings from the Bible, we see examples of the way the church is led in the power of the Holy Spirit toward people out on the boundaries, in places that we would not have gone if left to our own devices. Our reading from the Acts of the Apostles says that while Peter was proclaiming the word of God, the Holy Spirit came upon all who were listening. The people Peter was speaking to were Gentiles, people like you and me. And through the sharing of the good news of Jesus, the Holy Spirit came upon everyone who was listening. Then these Gentiles started to do an amazing thing. They praise God in other languages. That is certainly an example of bearing good fruit. That was an amazing day. It was a day that the prophet Joel had prophesied would happen long ago. The prophet said, in the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days, I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. The scriptures describe the Holy Spirit as having certain recognizable, consistent tendencies, like comfort and compassion, outreach and energy. As Jesus prepares to leave his disciples, he tells them that he will not leave them alone. He will not leave them as orphans. Instead, he will send to them an advocate who will be with them and will speak to them about God and will speak for them to God. When Philip, one of the first to lead the early church in the Acts of the Apostles, is pushed out into the desert, he meets a rather unique man. Philip met a man from a foreign land who was of a different race, and the man asked to be baptized. The Ethiopian official wanted to join Jesus' family, and Philip does just that. He baptized the man. When Philip gets back to Jerusalem, the church leadership wants to know how Philip felt he could do something that was so radically inclusive. How could Philip baptize a foreigner, somebody all the way from Ethiopia? Philip's defense was this. The Holy Spirit made me do it. Philip blamed his actions on the Holy Spirit. Philip told the church leaders that he would never think up something so courageous outlandish or loving on his own. Left to his own devices, Philip would have not borne such lasting fruit as baptizing another person. Blame it on the Holy Spirit. It was the Holy Spirit who enabled Philip to bear lasting fruit for the kingdom of God. It was the power and presence of the Holy Spirit 
that enabled Philip to make an excellent choice. So how about us here this morning? How might we make good choices which bear lasting fruit? How might we bear good fruit at school or at work or volunteering to help others here in St. Peter or wherever it is that you live? Today we celebrate the confirmation of six of our young people. God chose them in their baptism. God forgave them their sins, filled their lives with the Holy Spirit, and marked them with the cross of Christ forever. They belong to Christ. Today they are choosing to continue living into their baptismal faith. So how might you, our confirmands, choose to live out your faith. Think about that. Pray about that. Ask the Holy Spirit to guide you in the choices you make throughout your lives. And to all of us, I say, stay alert. Keep your hearts and your minds open. We never know when the Holy Spirit might prompt us to reach out and impact and bless another person's life. So let's keep ourselves spiritually attuned so that we might be able to hear and act on the promptings of the Holy Spirit. Now you might say, Pastor Chris, how can I possibly do that? Well, it's not that hard. Pray. Read your Bibles. Come to worship. Receive Christ in the sacraments. And allow the Holy Spirit to continue working in your lives. Continue to be open, have an open heart so that the Holy Spirit will lead you every day. In holy baptism, God has chosen us so that with the Spirit's help, we can make the right choices on the things that matter the most in life. And for that, we say thanks be to God and amen. <laughs>